Steve, multiple universes is something that is talked about now very seriously, generated through lots of different physics. Uh, uh, do you have an aesthetics of multiple universes? Well, of course, the word universe, I suppose, properly should be uh, meant, should mean the whole thing, everything. Uh, but we tend to think of universe, uh, use the word sometimes just to mean our Big Bang, the things we can see out to 10 billion light years in all directions. And in that sense, it, it's an honest, uh, uh, re reasonable question, is this unique? Are there multiple ones? And there could be multiple ones in many different senses. Uh, it could be as simple as the fact that there are, the universe is bigger than we think. It's much bigger than 10 billion light years across, and that there are big bangs going off in different places. And there are theories of cosmology, the so-called chaotic inflation, which actually has this as a consequence uh, due to the work of Andre Linde pr primarily. Then there's another possibility, which is also fairly simple to imagine, just that this Big Bang is one episode, and maybe uh, it, it followed a series of other bangs, and uh, it, that our universe will make a transition into a different kind of expanding universe, and we're just li living through a particular age. Uh, but then there are other possibilities that are more, uh, a little bit more recondite and uh, that have to do with the application of quantum mechanics to the whole shebang. And uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, you can, uh, because the, the fundamental quantity in quantum mechanics is not the individual particle uh, or billiard ball, but is something called the wave function that describes all possibilities, you can have a system where uh, the universe has a particle in it, but uh, the, the particle, it's indeterminate whether it's moved there or here, and they're both possibilities are realized, and it's only when you observe it that you see it's either here or there. So maybe both exist. Mo both do exist at the same time, and only an outside intervention for collapses the wave function so that the particle is either here or there. It may be that the universe, the big universe, the whole thing, <laughs> is some kind of quantum mechanical superposition of different possibilities. In fact, it almost certainly is, because we don't have any other... Way of I mean, that's the best way that I can understand quantum mechanics, is that that is the case. Uh, then there are even more uh, exotic possibilities. The philosopher Robert Nozick has uh, introduced the so-called principle of fecundity, according to which, if you can imagine it, it exists. Uh, everything you can imagine exists. They don't exist in the same space-time. They're entirely separate. But um, whatever you think of, that is there, and that it avoids the question of why are things the way they are, because whatever you can think of, they are that way. Um, You've talked about beauty as a defining characteristic of not only good science, but the fundamental structure of the world. Is the picture you're now describing a beautiful one? I would say a beautiful theory is one that doesn't have arbitrary assumptions, that isn't carefully tinkered with to make it mm -hmm. match mm -hmm. observations. And uh, it, this is not, to me, as beautiful as a theory which is so logically uh, constrained that it can only be one way. But, uh, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily get all the beauty in life that we hope for. <laughs> And uh, you can't reject a theory just because it isn't as beautiful as you were hoping for. It's not entirely ugly <laughs> to imagine that the, uh, the answer, that the question why things are the way they are is answered by saying that they are that way just locally and that they're different uh, in other places. For example... Um, the question uh, why the Earth is 93 million miles from the Sun, uh, a theory that doesn't predict that might be regarded as an ugly theory because it becomes an arbitrary number. On the other hand, it's real. On the other hand, if there are billions of planets, as in fact there doubtless are, and they occupy 
a complete continuum of possible distances from their parent stars, then you would say that the beauty is, and perhaps there is a theory that describes the statistical distribution of the distance of planets from their stars that says uh, what is the probability of having a planet of a certain mass a certain mm -hmm. distance from a star that might be a beautiful theory even though it doesn't say anything about where any yeah. one planet is from the star so we might have a statistical theory of multiple universes which would be in its way beautiful although it doesn't explain why any one universe is the way it is and very often the beauty we find in nature is of a statistical kind for example the theory of uh, thermodynamics is universally regarded as a beautiful physical theory, but doesn't tell you where each particle is in a right. gas. It just tells right. you statistical things about right. that. Uh, you, uh, you search for beauty, but you can't be too sure in advance where you'll find it or what kind of beauty you'll have. But in the end, if the theory isn't beautiful, the hell with it. It isn't worth, <laughs> it isn't worth worrying about.